Hey my friends, welcome to this week's vlog. This week I'm talking about where to start for the beginner. Um, so the most basic striking techniques and what you can do to speed up your growth as a performer and as a player and as a sound explorer. So I'm going to show you quickly a couple tips on how to begin the process of understanding and learning and loving the rap. So let's take a look. So a fundamental difference between the handpan and the rav, and even instruments like a steel drum, is the mechanism for sound creation. Whereas a handpan and a steel drum is based off of the tension in the tone field, so it's hammered out, these are based off of the weight of the tongues and the size. So the bigger the tongue, the deeper the note. In creating this innovative instrument, Andre was able to find a mechanism to vibrate more than just a single idiopan tongue. So the tongue is vibrating like this, and it's also vibrating individually. So each of these cuts represents another note. Uh, and they have between seven and five notes per tongue. This means that when you strike a note, you're not only activating the fundamental, in this case it's, it's a B, this is a B Celtic, you're also activating the other harmonics and partials that are associated with that fundamental note. Uh, in doing this, you're also creating a beautiful sympathetic resonance throughout the instrument, because the way these are tuned is in a harmonious way, so you don't have to worry as much about your movement throughout the scale. There are half steps in it, but even with those half steps, it still sounds very melodic. So when you begin to look at the rav, the first tip I can give you for beginning playing it is to choose either your thumb or your pointer finger, and some people use their middle finger as well. When you strike these tongues, you want to aim for the area right around the V. So in the center note, it happens to be here, down here, it's right above that section there. Um, some people like to hit them lower, some people like to hit them higher, but I found the best tone comes from right in the center of that V. When you're striking it, you're not leaving your finger on it. You're Because if you leave your finger down, it mutes the note. So listen to the difference between this and that's with it down, that's with it bouncing off. So imagine you're touching a really warm pan and you want to grab it really quick and let go of it so it doesn't burn you. This is similar in a way, because you're letting your finger hit it and then bounce back off. When you're starting off, oftentimes it's easier to strike with your thumb if you have kind of bony thumbs like I do. And when I'm striking, I'm using this portion of my thumb, so where the joint attaches to the upper digit on your finger. Um, and this I just strike with the side with a wrist slapping movement. Kind of like a bass player hits a bass string if they're playing slap bass. The same can be done with a pointer finger or a middle finger. In playing like this, it creates a little bit warmer of a tone, and it also allows you to activate the harmonics a little more easily. So oftentimes we're playing the center note. I'll be using my thumb to play sort of the driving rhythm, and then my pointer finger or middle finger is going to move around and create the triads and dyads throughout the scale. Um, in using your pointer or middle finger, you're using a slap technique, very much like the thumb technique, but you're going down and letting your finger bounce off. Because again, if you leave it there, the advantage to using your pointer or middle finger is that your hand naturally wants to bounce off. You don't, your thumb is more inclined to stay against it. Using these fingers allows your sort of the natural movement of your hand to carry it up. One really fantastic feature of the center note is that you have obviously the primary note, which is a B. You have an octave note, and a fifth. But you also have a tone field above here. And you have a secret note tuned in down here. I'll turn it around so you can 
you can hear that. This, for striking this one and creating that overtone, you're hitting just on the edge of where it says vast. You can hear that upper octave. So to activate these harmonics, we're gonna be using a pointer finger, and we're gonna be using our other finger to gently touch the center of the V. And you're gonna keep your finger there. And you're gonna strike the wing, which is the corner of the tongue. Once you've struck it, you can lift up that other finger. The same thing can be done with other parts on the tongue. You can also move that left finger over, strike this wing, and have another octave or harmonic. These harmonics allow you to add variety to your playing, even if you're just playing one note you can create a whole array of sounds. So I'll give you an example of what that sounds like. The same technique can be applied to any of the tongues. Um, the bottom ones in particular usually have a tuned area above the tongue, just like the center note. And you oct activate the octave in the fifth in the same way. Pressing in the center lightly with your left finger, or right finger, and tapping the wing. So if you are just getting started, do not be afraid to experiment with playing it in different ways. This is not a handpan. Uh, it's not going to come out of tune. If you don't strike the tongue in the right area, it's not going to mess anything up. Ignore people that tell you that you're playing incorrectly. Whatever your approach is to this instrument, if it feels right to you and it's making the right sound for you, it's an okay approach to the instrument. That's the beauty of the Rab Vast is it's more forgiving for players who are looking to explore or people who are looking to start learning an instrument and not have as many of those boundaries between producing a sound and actually being able to enjoy it. Um, so I recommend that you try out just those two strike techniques. In the next video, we're gonna talk about a couple different rhythms we can use and also patterns that will help build your skill set in creating new sounds and in writing songs eventually as well because one of the beauties of this instrument is that it's not just a drum this is also a melodic instrument so you have aspects of percussion but it's also a melodic instrument in the same way that you wouldn't necessarily play a xylophone like you would a djembe you know it has aspects of both within it so Good luck to all the new players, and I'm looking forward to sharing more with you soon. Stay well.